Good day, everybody. Pastor Kevin here bringing you today's Matthew devotional. We are in Matthew 9, and we're finishing the section on the paralytic today. I'm just going to read the last, uh, I believe it's three verses of this section. Um, we've been talking about how um, Jesus saw the faith of them, meaning like the, their faith, the, the ones who brought the paralytic, and possibly including the paralytic. We've talked about how Jesus is coming up against this resistance because by, by basically um, saying that your sins are forgiven, he is making a statement. Uh, the place where you go to get your sins forgiven is the temple, and the scribes know it, and everyone knows it. So uh, the fact that he says this is pretty shocking, um, and then we will continue today. So let me get right to the text here. It says, but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, Rise, pick up your bed, and go home. And he rose and went home, and the crowd saw it. They were afraid, and they glorified God, who had given such authority to men. Jesus' response to the, the statement of this man is blaspheming, he basically just says, Okay. He had already said that they had, you know, what, why is it you think evil in your hearts? Like knowing their thoughts, he says this. And um, he says, but wait, just so that we're clear, just so that we're absolutely clear. Um, he had asked, which is easier, which is a really interesting question. And it's really hard to recognize in one way, in one sense, the easier thing to say is your sins are forgiven because there's no empirical evidence that can be um, checked after the fact to say that it actually happened. Um, however, the, for the paralytic, rise and walk clearly would be one of those things that empirically, if you see the paralytic get up and walk away, <laughs> you're going to know that there was something that indeed did happen. But in another sense, that statement of, um, which is easier to say, to say that your sins are forgiven is not easier in one sense because of the response that you knew that the scribes would give. Because the truth is, if Jesus is not the Son of God, then it is blasphemy. Right? It's That's not where you get forgiveness. And a, a man doesn't say that. Right? But the God-man does. And and that's where we're getting a little clue in. This is this this moment that's kind of where all of these levels of authority come up and come together. And now it's over the greatest, deepest, the one that you can't really check. That's the thing that Jesus does. And he makes it certain in this last section and says, but I want to make sure you understand. So he says, rise and walk. So the point Jesus is making is, I'm just, you know, while I, the, the, while I think this, this statement that Matthew has written down is Jesus saying, I will deal with the deepest issue, the one that sits at the center of it all. But that does not mean I will not restore uh, in other ways as well, right? The physical body of this paralytic as an example. And the crowds were amazed. They're amazed. So a couple things. One, son of man he comes up. This is, I think, I believe the second time it's come up. Um, I think you should go back and read Daniel 7, 13, and 14. Um, this is one of those references where I think this one is definitely getting in the realm of trying to talk about this, this cloud rider, this one who comes to the um, because it is, it is the, the son of man here. He's, it's, um, while he's, it's hard to see a self-reference, um, he's the one who is the, the one claiming authority over sin. So you can see that he's built into it, right? The Son of Man is the one. So that you would know that the Son of Man has authority over this realm of sin, even forgiveness of sins. <clears throat> and then, second, the crowds marveled and they were afraid. And I'm not sure, actually in my small group, it came up, good question came up. It's, is that a bad afraid or a good afraid? And I'd argue, um, probably both, but I would lean toward a good afraid. This is the fear of the Lord type of a scenario. Because what did they do? They glorified God. They glorified God. And if you go back and you remember your Sermon on the Mount, you will remember statements that Jesus made like, in the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. 
So what happens when Jesus does kingdom work down to the very deepest core? People glorify God. Super good stuff. And I mean, from, from here, last time I asked you to compare yourself to the, the friends or the, um, the scribes here, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's one of those things where um, we've talked about fear. Maybe it's just glorifying God. Maybe it's just, <clears throat> have you taken the moment? Are you recognizing how deep and wide the love of God is for you and that the magnitude, the distance he would go, the, the lengths through which he would go in order to save you and me? Because ultimately it gets back to that sacrificial system, right? There was in all likelihood for a person who's in the, the Sea of Galilee area, they're going to walk, you know, 60, 70, 80 miles to Jerusalem on a, at the, probably during feast times with their little lamb beside them, right? A, something that grew up out of their flock. It's probably the best of their flock. They walk into Jerusalem. They go to the Temple Mount. They walk in and the priest kills that lamb for the blood to be poured out before the altar, for the forgiveness of sins. And again, we, we walk beside our king who walks with us. And there's this moment of, of recognition, almost a, <clears throat> a moment of reckoning where we must remember that the one who walks with us is the one who would give his own blood, the one who's present with us now because of his sacrifice, we are able to be with him. Uh, and and it's, it's pretty powerful. Pretty powerful. And that's where uh, I think Pastor Sam said, you got to read through the book of Hebrews, man, because it talks about how Jesus is the good and better. He's the good and better priest. He's, he's, he is the sacrifice to end all sacrifices. He is, all of those images of the temple is summed up in this man, Jesus, and in the work that he did on our behalf. Um, and I said, man, Jesus, but it's man and God, man, Jesus, right? But he is, he, even Hebrews says he was tempted like us. He, he brought himself down to our level. So do we glorify God in that way? Man, today's a day. Take a moment today and just glorify your God in heaven for the goodness, for his goodness, for the things he's done for you and for me, um, and it's one of those things, Liz, let me glory you more, Lord. That's what I want to say. How can I give you glory more? Because I know there's these moments in time when I am either I don't look like I'm giving him glory or I'm straight up not. Or, I mean, in heaven forbid, I'm doing things that are doing the exact opposite. Or I'm just being lazy and sitting around. You know what I'm saying? What is it that he can do that when you speak to your king to help you? through his spirit, to actually glorify him more. Because um, we should. We should stand amazed at the cross. We should stand amazed at the very thing that this story kind of is somewhat pointing to in this really implicit way. Um, because he deserves our glory, all of it. Um, and, man, there's so much to be had when you look around your, your world, your life. Uh, this is a glorious place. Um, we as people sometimes bring it down. Um, through what we do and how we act, but um, it's still something that we can enjoy and love, and we should do it in a way that actually brings our King glory. Okay? All right, let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for your love. Thank you for um, actually <laughs> doing the work that would allow us to give you glory. We want to give you glory. Father, many times we don't know how. Sometimes we're in difficult situations and we don't really see how either either way we respond would necessarily bring you glory. But Father, please put it in our hearts to just at least set it before you and ask, how can I bring glory to your name today? Because I have seen your glory. I have seen your son and what he's done on my behalf. So help me be this little part, this little teeny part of the light that actually points to how good you are. We love you. We thank you. Help us honor you this day and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we'll see you.